और स्पेशल थैंक्स हम करेंगे टीवी प्रोग्राम जो है हमारा धनक धनक के जो सुहेल राणा साहब है मैं चाहूंगा कि आप उनके बहुत सारी भरपूर तालियां बजाएं इन्होंने हमारे साथ बहुत काम किया हम बड़े मशहूर है मजबूरी तौर पर सारी तालियां दोस्तों As I promised you early, I would bring you members of the Dream Team 1997, and with me today is the group Avaz. With me is Harun and Keith. <laughs> okay, Harun, tell me, what um, what made you get into the singing profession, and especially the group thing that is uh, uh, becoming a phenomenon now? Well, actually, um, I always had this love of music, and when I was in, a, you know, in high school, when I was in school, I got a little band together and. Um, we used to play, you know, in our local, you know, school dances and things like that. And then I went away to college. I actually came here to college to Washington D.C., yeah. and I did my degree in finance. But always in the back of my mind and in my heart, I knew what I really wanted to do was music. Mm -hmm. So once I did my degree, I came back to Pakistan, and I hooked up with a friend of mine, Fakhr, who's also a very talented musician, and we decided to form the band. And we, you know, we believe in ourselves and we just went for it. Great. Um, tell me, uh, you've come out with a recent album, Shola, and you were telling me a little story before we started today th uh, that you got an inspiration for a song. Tell me a little story behind it. How do you actually get these inspirations to write songs? Well, what you got to do is you got to look at yourself inside you, but you also got to look around you, what's happening, because you want to be, I guess, with, with uh, the latest you know, trends. You got to be with it. And uh, what was very relevant in our country at the time, a topic was corruption. You know, in India, Pakistan, there's so much corruption. And we really wanted to, I guess, being role models, we really wanted to highlight that point. And uh, one of the people who is considered, who, you know, generally has the tag of being the most corrupt person was Asif Sardari. And he was given the tag Mr. Ten Percent, right? <laughs> so we decided to come up with a song called Mr. Ten Percent, you know. And uh, we did the song, but it was during Benazir's uh, reign rule that uh, we had done the song, and we knew there's no way we could release it. So we said, okay, let's change the Ten Percent to Mr. Fraudier. Uh -huh. And so that's what we did. And uh, even then, they wouldn't let it run on air <laughs> until after her government was dismissed. And um, so the censor boards even got you during during her reign. That's right. That's right. But it uh, became a this a huge success. We really enjoy playing in concert. It's a lot of fun. Great. Do you find yourself uh, constantly battling the censor board with uh, songs that you want to release? Very true. Unfortunately, in Pakistan, we don't have the uh, sort of like promotion of the arts and culture as as in India, India which is very sad in fact I was just speaking to a friend last night in Pakistan who's uh, owns a record company there and he told me that recently the new laws have been passed which uh, are make it more difficult for pop music you know and heavier censorship policies which is really sad actually because there's so many talented young people and there's so much you can do well, you know, the group phenomenon started in Pakistan, and I think it's now hitting India with the singers, and, and they're coming out with videos and stuff. Uh, how are you guys doing as far as uh, making videos, and do you, does the censor board even hurt you there? Well, um, the funny thing is, we the f how we came about was, in 1992, we wrote a song, and we made a video, and we gave it to the local networks in Pakistan, and they were like, no, you guys, hey, stick to your day job, you know, you're not very good, you know. And we gave it to, yeah, exactly. And then we gave it to the, the you know, the one EMI Records, one of the uh, record companies there, and they said, yeah, we'll call you, don't call us, you know. And we were really disheartened. We were Fakhr and myself, you know, there just two of us then. We're like, okay, man, I think I'll go do my MBA, you know. And Fakhr's like, yeah, I'm, I'm busy with my engineering degree and stuff. 
And I thought, hmm, you know, MTV had just taken off then. I said, what if I send it across to them? Let's see what happens. So I sent them a umatic copy, right? And I wrote a letter saying, you know, there are nearly one billion people that speak this language in India and Pakistan. Right. And, and they played the song, and they played it a lot. And from there, then, oh, the rec you know, the record company was calling us up. The Talvin stations, hey, you know, we want to interview you. Come and sing the song. And so I guess a videos make a huge difference. So yeah. how does the censor board affect you there? I know recently some of the people have had problems in Pakistan getting some uh, videos released because uh, they were not, quote unquote, of appropriate manner. Um, have you had to face that? Luckily, we've uh, worked with uh, a director we've worked with is Asim Raza, and he's uh, one of the top ad makers there. And he always keeps in mind the censorship policy. So we've always. Um, worked in such a way that we haven't had any problems as such. Okay. The parameters of the censorship policies. Basically. So it was you and Fucker. And so Keith, where do you come in? Well, I, I come in 1995. That's when yeah, I made my entry. It was like end of 90, November 95. November 95, yeah. I was in England before that for two and a half years. and We went to a club in England. We yeah. were on tour in England, right? And, I was and he was playing uh, in a club there. Yeah, I was playing. I was playing bass and singing in a club. And that's when, at that particular moment, they needed a, a, a bass guitarist as well. So they said, why don't you come back, come down to Pakistan and join us? So I was like, yeah, but I don't know you guys, like how, I mean, you could be just an ordinary band busking around the streets of Pakistan. Uh -huh. And they said, no, you got to come back and, and see. So then I went back to Pakistan in 95. And uh, that's where we did the deal and I joined Avaz. And it's been great since then. I've been traveling a lot with them, playing many a show, you know, all over, in fact, all over the world. I remember I the, one of the f first shows that Keith did with us, there was something like, uh, 25,000 people there. Yeah, and, right? like, and Keith was like, whoa, right to the God. deep end, you know, like, from wow. playing like for 10, 15. I thought I'd work my way up to that, but <laughs> was, whoa. You know, initially it was like a, sh a very pleasant shock, and you know, I was like, really surprised, like, these guys are mega stars. So um, after that, it's been great. Actually. So it was kind of a break in disguise almost. Yeah, actually, yeah. what happened was we had a, a guy in our band called Asad. And uh, things didn't work really work, weren't really work. <laughs> this is us, right? right? And things weren't really working out, and so we sort of pulled Keith in instead. Oh. Yeah. So okay, all of you quit your day jobs and now are full time involved with Avats. How do you think your life would have been different had you been just ordinary Joe schmoes? Definitely. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, one negative aspect about this is that you you're on the road you know it's like you're leading almost like a gypsy life out of the suitcase like um, this year we toured the UK in March and then we're here now then we've been to cities all over Pakistan Quetta, Faisalabad, Hyderabad, Multan mm -hmm. so it's like um, in your way that's the only negative aspect the positive aspect is that it's a lot of fun you get to meet a lot of nice people you uh, get to make a lot of friends you see a lot of very exotic different cities mm -hmm. and uh, that's but we really love it. It's great. But the girls are after you constantly. Do you guys have sweethearts at home that wait for you? Well, <laughs> Should you admit it on television? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I don't have, have any sweetheart at home, which, and I'm, I'm looking for a sweetheart. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I have to ask you this, because I'm sure all the, the females are going to be curious. What would you like your sweetheart to be like? Um, Maybe a song? Maybe a song. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a song on her? Shola. Do you think you'd like a sweetheart to be like Shola? Not like Shola. Maybe something like Hasina. Kanti Hasina. Have you heard we that wrote song? a song called Johnny Kanti Hasina. Uh -huh. and, and that's who you think you want? Hasinas out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope there are a lot of Hasinas out there on this tour. And you can probably choose one of them. Yeah. A lot of them in Miami and Orlando. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Then you introduce <laughs> okay. Oh my god. That's yeah, a big that's task. <laughs> Okay, in closing, all your fans are just dying to see you guys. Um, you've had great responses um, in all the other cities here. And um, so, if you could say something to them, what would you say? Well, uh, we really look forward to coming and seeing you and having a great time in concert and coming down to your beautiful state. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Great, and guys. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much.